Hello and welcome, I am Dogbert, and this is my update at DD5 review and recommendations for patch 6.3. Uh, there's been enough changes since I last did this back when I first got Dormammu, which I think was June. Uh, and I finally completed the second run that uh, I thought it uh, merited an update. Of course, we had the big news with Apocalypse and you know, all those horsemen and everything else like that. So this is what I would do now if I was a player who didn't have Dormammu yet. But also a little bit of advice for players who do have Dormammu uh, in the next slide. So, why do I need to get Dormammu now? Can I just wait to get Apocalypse? The answer is really no, because Dormammu is very important to use in Cosmic Crucible. He will help you in Arena, and he helps make the Mystic Raid, raid Nodes a breeze now. When Dormammu first came out, it was really no reason to use Dormammu in Raids, because we were using the Eternals and the New Warriors. With the addition of Morgan Le Fay, it allowed us to get rid of Cloak and Dagger, uh, just keep Death Pool, put the Eternals in there with Dormammu, and now we can just fly through the Raids. I know I just absolutely destroy Mystic in Doom 3.2. And the other thing is, Apocalypse is months away. We still need to get the Red Hulk or War Scourge. We need to get the Death Scourge. We need to get Rogue's second run. And then we need to get the War Death second runs. If I was to make a guess based on the patch cycles so far, I would not expect to see us getting Apocalypse until March or April of next year based on the requirements that we need to get these two different Scourge runs. Of course, this could all change. They could just throw them all at us at once all of a sudden. But I don't even expect us to get the Death Scourge until December, January time frame. Just looking at what they have been doing and the way they've been releasing it. Not saying they couldn't speed this up if they wanted to. They absolutely could. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how that goes, but that's what I'm looking at right now. We got a long time to go. And uh, the other thing you're going to notice on this, I'm recommending non-horsemen here because and you might be saying, don't I need to save teal gear for horsemen only? The answer is again, no. You don't want to be afraid to gear raid, G16 raid characters after you get to Mamu. This includes Dormammu. The reason being, if your raid characters aren't doing what they need to do and they need G16, then you're going to have to G16 for whatever level of difficulty you're at based on your character's power. I will say though first, try them out, level them up first. That means 80, you know, 80s, the upper 80s, the 90, see if that works whatever level of difficulty you're at. If it's still not working, then put the G16 on them. Don't be afraid to put G16 on any rate characters. And yes, this includes the Axemen. The Axemen are going to be around a while. Like I said, I don't expect the Death Scourge until December, January. We're in August. That's quite a few months of pain if you're into Doom 3 that you need to get through those mutant nodes now. It may not be the best uh, use of G16, but we're getting a lot of more teal gear now, especially if you're doing a Doom 3. We're getting a bunch of orbs there. We're getting constant. Uh, these monthly events are giving us quite a bit of G16 uniques the mini uniques we need and everything so we are getting more g16 now we had the updated uh challenges to give us some more g16 of the origin gear it is definitely loosening up probably where it should have been a few months ago but that's another story and the other thing is the real bottleneck for apocalypse is the t4 and t5 ions and where do you get those you get them in cosmic crucible and how do you win Cosmic Crucible? Well, Dormammu is one of the ways you do it. If you're one of the first inside of your bracket that you're getting mashed up with, with people who don't have Dormammu, you're probably going to win. And you need to get into that Platinum and Higher, I believe it is, to get those T4 Ions, which you absolutely need to get Apocalypse. So this requires also having a bigger... Uh, a wider roster. A lot of these characters I'm going to recommend are great in Cosmic Crucible as well. That's why you definitely want to do that. So keep all this in mind. You can't just simply save your teal gear for horsemen only. On top of that, 
there's like one city horse one city horseman team character only one cosmic most of them are global as of right now we'll have to wait and see uh what the death scourge brings so let's move on now finally and we're going to start off with City, the absolute hardest nightmare section of DD5. My recommended team now is absolutely bring Squirrel Girl and bring Shang-Chi. Those two I would not sub out. You absolutely need Squirrel Girl. She does great for the cleanses and heals, plus she puts an AoE heal block on the team. There's a ton of healing and cleansing going on on the other side in, the, in these nodes. They're a freaking nightmare. Ghost Spider, you're going to eventually need her at G16. You want her because she's constantly doing damage whenever a web warrior gets hit. She's part of that raid, that bio raid team. Uh, Spider, The OG Spider-Man, he'll give her turn meter. Plus, he can heal himself a little bit. And that also helps out with, OG, uh, with Ghost Spider. Or if he's getting hit, he dodges a lot as well. And then finally, Ms. Marvel. To get that healer-brawler synergy. Don't forget, everybody but Ghost Spider is a uh, brawler-type character. That we can use for those that we can... Or a young Avenger, in the case of Squirrel Girl, sorry. In which case, she can assist... And so that really helps out. She's also incredibly tanky, especially when she's built up high. Uh, and in bonuses, Squirrel Girl and Marvel being Young Avengers are a great Cosmic Crucible team. You also need them for the Scourge for Rogue. If you haven't gotten very high stars, you want to do a bit better in that Scourge, get higher stars on Rogue, who's a great character. You absolutely want to build up Ms. Marvel as well. But they're all alternatives if you don't want to use some of those characters. Like I said, the only two I'd really say absolutely bring is Shang-Chi and Squirrel Girl. The other options, of course, being the rest of the Web Warriors. You can bring Cloak by himself, but do not bring Dagger without Cloak. That's very important to remember. That's if you want to spend that Mystic Gear on them. Uh, it's up to you. And the last alternative, which I don't recommend on a first run, maybe save her for a second run. She is an expensive bio character, but she does use Gravitonium as a unique. So maybe that's She-Hulk. I don't think she's going to add much to the team. It's up to you how much you want to pound your head in City. City is very difficult, like I said. It's up to you how much you really want to be in for that pain. I do recommend getting it through it as quick as possible if at a reasonable budget. Unfortunately, you're going to see that we're going to be loading up on certain traits in different sections here. As you can see, this one's pretty well loaded with bio, but there's not going to be too many other bio characters on this list after this, after this uh, section. Moving on to global, and my God, are we loaded in global right now? But here's might be the shock of who I'm recommending. There's actually nobody that's a horseman team of my recommended. It's actually the new Bionic Avengers. That's right. I'm recommending Deathlock, Vision, Viv Vision, Doctor Doom, and Captain Sam. Now, of course, you know Deathlock, Vision, and Viv Vision all work incredibly well together, being the Bionic Avengers. Deathlock puts out a ton of damage. Vision has an ability block. He can clear all positive effects. He hits very hard, actually, with that, too. He can call and assist with Viv Vision. He can give Viv Vision uh, energy. Viv Vision can call him for an assist. Viv Vision can knock an entire row, give them blind. She also has an ability block as well. She also will heal Vision and Deathlock, who definitely need the heals. You might want to put Healer Iso on her if you're going to use this comp. And, of course, Dr. Doom, the nodes are pretty much made for you to have brought Dr. Doom. He is just such a good character here. You absolutely need to bring him. You don't forget, he's only half Mystic, half Tech, so it's not as expensive as you think. And then, finally, we have Captain Sam, phenomenal tank. Don't forget that when the Bionic Avengers get energy, that's going to help them out. Plus, it helps Deadlock get a charge. He can give out energy to them. He can give them turn meter. He can help with Doom, give him energy. You see how this is all going to work. And I've actually have run this team in DD4 as a test, just because I don't have my Bionic Avengers obviously up to gear 16 yet. And it does incredibly well. So I am definitely recommending it for DD5. Now we have lots of alternatives. The first two being Maria Hill and Sharon Carter. You might want to bring one of them in instead. 
like I said, the one problem with the recommended team is the healer thing, or you might have to put it on Viv. You might even want to put it on Dr. Doom. He has a very big health pool that would make him, he takes a lot of turns. He could really actually heal people up. This is an alternative, but the other couple of characters, Maria Hill and Sharon Carter are incredibly good. I would take Sharon over Maria if you don't need heals. Sharon's uh, control abilities are a lot more valuable inside those global nodes. But don't count up Maria. The only problem with her is summoning those troopers interfuse a little bit with Doom. you got to learn how to play that. Uh, Emma Frost, amazing character, still using her in Arena. Uh, absolutely worth bringing. Uh, her knocking down the turn meter, she can be used as a healer again. She can strip those buffs with that mind control, don't forget. Next character is Beast. I do recommend Beast because Beast can be a little squishy for me. I've actually had to upgrade him to G16 anyway for the Doom 3.2 raids just to make my Beast survive. But if you have higher red stars than me, you wouldn't need that. But he is definitely a character to consider. He is a healer again. Another character who's a bit cheaper, Kate Bishop, another young Avenger. Very good character, works well. You kind of would want to bring her more of like a Maria Hill on the team to help heal her and keep her going. Agatha, of course, being on the Darkhold team, part of a Horseman team, is definitely an alternative use. You could also bring Scarlet Witch. Uh, Wong uses the, the Chi. Nobody else really uses that, so that's a good mini unique. You're going to have to eventually gear him up anyway. You also have Gambit and Hulk there, again, all part of these horseman teams. You also have Dazzler, Sunfire, and Phantom X. Other than those three, I would try to stay away from, especially with your first run. I'd stay more to the left, <laughs> I can say, unless you really love those characters and really want to do a whole lot of mutants all at once. I don't recommend that. And this list is really built on having a bit of it more of a budget. As for Cosmic, Cosmic's gotten a little weird. We've really gotten and settled into it, but now we've had to make some adjustments. The Eternals are absolute must. Reality Cosmic is the Eternal show. I've gotten down to just the Eternals and pretty much cleared a node already after the other three characters died. Next recommended character is Kestrel. Part of the skill raid team, still useful. I uh, don't know if she'll be used in tech. Doesn't look like she'll be used in tech anymore. But you'll still need her for that skill raid team. Of course, very useful in Cosmic Crucible and elsewhere. I put Moon Dragon up here because, well, she's a skill character and she's cosmic. We kind of need some skill characters in here to help balance out that gear. But again, there's alternatives that you could change instead of Moon Dragon. Plus, Moon Dragon can be used in a pinch in raids if you need to replace Maria Hill for whatever reason, or if you're on a node or if the, with those carnages and death pools, you just don't want to risk it with Maria Hill and maybe hitting a summon or something like that. And last but not least, a character who's always been good, it was just the cost of Mystic Gear, but now because we've kind of rebalanced out uh, who are using, we can now maybe afford him a little bit more, but he is expensive. And that is Doctor Strange Heartless. He's a very good character. He would be better if we had like a Thanos or something to charge him, but he works well just as is, and he is a horseman character, horseman team character that you need to build up anyway. Some alternatives that you have T'Challa, but he's a tech character, but he's a cheaper tech character, like 36. You also have Philo of El Gamora Nebula. Still incredibly useful, the Infinity Watch is in Cosmic Crucible and elsewhere in the game. Silver Surfer, still always a good character, but Mystic character again. Uh, if you want a very cheap option, the Ravager Stitcher uh, wouldn't be a very high cost, but then you have to build up a Ravager Stitcher. Death Pool still being used in Mystic Raids because of her energy generation. Don't know if she'll be going away anytime soon. And last but not least would be Bishop if you really want a mutant. Is he going to do anything in the Cosmic Nodes? I highly doubt it. Except be the fifth and allow you to go in but he's another one again where he's the axeman on the raid team you might want to build him up just to have him already ready for that a big bishop does help in the raids although he probably won't do much in cosmic but this will give you a mutant if you want to get a mutant in there maybe you have a bunch of mutant gear because when we go into legendary we're going to start spending it so now we get to legendary and pretty much Legendary, I expect to eventually be the Four Horsemen and Omega Red. Because right now, Morgan Le Fay and Rogue are absolute must to bring along with Omega Red. 
Those three are the hard. You must bring these three characters. Now, the next two I recommend at this time is still Jubilee and Black Bolt. Once we have Red Hulk, uh, I would say replace Black Bolt with Red Hulk. They're both bio characters, so it's a very easy swap out. And if the, the Four Horsemen ends up being Archangel and he's a mutant, it would easily replace Jubilee. Even if he's a tech character, still replace Jubilee, unless you really want mutants in there. Alternatives, probably number one would be Iron Man now, but he is very expensive as far as gear, so a better alternative might be Shuri. You know, you also have Phoenix, Nick Fury, Invisible Woman's quite good, Doc Ock, and of course Adam Warlock is good, but he is Mystic, and we burned a lot of Mystic in the last couple sections. So those are the things to think about to help you get through uh, DD5 a little bit quicker. Who to gear up? This does give you a pretty good selection, pretty balanced out selection of what gear you want to use. We're kind of heavily focused on Mutant and the Legendary, heavily focused on Mystic and Cosmic, heavily focused more on Tech in the Global, and more heavily focused on Bio inside the City. It's not the most fun thing to go through, but you need to get through it. You need to get Dormammu. You got a long time until you get Apocalypse, so you might as well get going. Get that Dormammu. Get your more cores. Get your Cosmic Crucible wins. Get your T4 ions. And until next time, everybody.